Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current fights of 15th March 2024. So we are going to take Delhi edition here and we are going to pick out articles which are relevant from our examination point of view. And after picking out of articles, we are going to see different dimensions and we are going to connect a single topic with different subjects. So this type of approach is the actual way of reading your current affairs. It is not like reading each and every word which is given in the article and making notes. It will not give you any, anything. Okay, it will be just waste of your time. So it is not the way to read current affairs. So I will teach you like how to read current affairs for your competitive examination. Okay, clear? And one more thing is we in Rathod's IS, we are providing free prelims mentorship. And if you are having any doubts regarding this prelims, and if you have any doubts regarding how to prepare for UPSC CSE and how to clear this UPSC CSE, and you can come to this offline branch in Hyderabad and you can take free mentorship. And even we are going to conduct free prelims test on 17th March. And after this test, we are going to have detailed assessment of your performance. And based on that, mentors will tell you like in which subject you are strong in which subject you are weak and in which subject your guesswork is well so that you can use that strategy in your final examination so that there is a high chance of clearing your prelims and if you want to clear this year prelims come and do register for that free prelims test and after this test you will be also having daily classes till your prelims okay and those classes are exclusively based on your prelims and we are going to discuss high priority topics where you can get question in your examination so we are not going to waste your time okay and those classes will also free of cost and that classes will be conducted only offline not online clear and even this examination now we are conducting on offline so if time permits next week we will be deciding for offline examination okay clear yeah and now let us see the front page of hindu and here we can see like the first important article in yesterday's class itself i said that so this committee is going to give the recommendations regarding this simultaneous elections right so title says panel recommends simultaneous polls or simultaneous election so the key word here you have to focus is simultaneous election now let us see dimension so the simultaneous election is also called as one nation one election so why we are saying one nation one election for example let us take this as india so this is our central like union right so here we have states so what is the meaning of one nation one election is elections for lok sabha and state legislative assembly together on a single day okay so this is the concept called as simultaneous elections or one nation one election what are the dimensions that you have to know so first you have to understand what is this one nation one election that is for lok sabha and state legislative assembly election together Okay, in one go, you have to see like what are the recommendations of this panel. Okay, so here there are two committees recommendations. So one is the committee which gave the recommendations now which is headed by our ex-president, okay, Ram Nath Kovid. And second one is law commission. So this law commission report will be also presented soon. So you have to see like both committees or panels recommendations on this simultaneous election. And you have to see like what are the advantages or what are the arguments in favor of this one nation one election. And one more dimension is what are the disadvantages or what are the arguments against so one will be favor and one will be against so this topic is at most important from gs paper to under polity 
okay polity and governance okay and even you can connect this topic with international relations also like which countries are following this one nation one uh, election mechanism and you can see like from international relations there are other countries like bhutan and nepal they are dependent on our electronic voting machines for the elections in their countries so from this point of view also we can add this okay so these are the some important things and even you can develop your own perspectives like whether we can go for this one nation one elections or not so you need to have your own idea okay how you are expressing your ideas regarding one nation one election so this topic is at most important and there is a high chance of getting both prelims and also mains based question from this article point of view so now let us see this article in detail so why it is in news finally high level committee so this is headed by our former president that means now the present president is draupadi murmu ji so before that we have this ramnath kovid right so here this committee was headed by this ramnath kovid ji and this committee now recommended elections to lok sabha and state legislative assemblies as the first step okay that means yes this committee or this panel is recommending yes we can go for one nation one election after this elections for lok sabha and state legislative assembly so we can take like 100 days of time that means around 3 months after which we can go for uh, go for this elections for local self government bodies like municipalities and panchayats okay so this is the thing this is the thing which mainly said here okay so first one is we can go for general elections and after that in the next phase we can go for elections for local self bodies like municipalities and panchayats and if you see some details which said that the committee submitted its report in 18000 pages so even it has more than 18000 pages to our present president and the report is put on the public domain so it is around 321 pages and even 22nd law commission report is pending okay so 22nd law commission which is also examining about this simultaneous elections so it is also expected to submit its report soon so after we are getting this then we can have again discussion regarding simultaneous elections whether we are going to have this or not So we're talking about simultaneous elections. So what is the meaning of the simultaneous elections? Simultaneous elections in India, it is idea of holding Lok Sabha and State Legislative Assembly elections together. That means elections for Lok Sabha and elections for State Legislative Assembly together, with the aim of reducing frequency of elections. So if you see, every year some states are having elections. last year five states and this year we have lok sabha elections and even some other states like ap they are having elections right so we are not following the elections for both legislative assemblies and lok sabha together that is a thing which is clear but earlier okay but earlier it was like when we got independence so we used to have the simultaneous elections but due to some problems and dissolving of governments that led to this irregular elections between lok sabha and state legislative assembly and even carving out of states also an important reason for this irregularity in elections between lok sabha and state legislative assembly and if you are talking about the arguments which are in favor of one nation one election it will reduce huge expenditure as yes or no if you want to go for separate elections for legislative assembly and as well as lok sabha it is very costly so we can reduce uh, expenditure and even the problem of frequent elections lead to imposition of moral code of conduct okay that moral code of conduct will be for long periods of time so whenever there is implementation or uh, starting of this moral code of conduct so government should not do some things so because of this it will be affecting the normal governance function okay but if you are having the simultaneous elections so we can resolve this issue there will be no problem or delay in this governance process 
and third important one is simultaneous elections which also leads to overcome the disruption of normal public life because whenever there is frequent elections so there will be the campaignings by different political parties and even implementation of modal code of conduct and even traffic jams so and so right so because of all these things the public life will be affected so if you are having a simultaneous elections yes we can decrease this and as one is simultaneous elections will free the crucial manpower which is often deployed for prolonged periods on election duties yes have you ever observed like whenever these elections are coming so there will be police who will be checking the vehicles on road and even at the borders of states yes of course there will be a proper checking and even uh there will be the checking of uh, vehicles like um, uh, cars etc motor vehicles whether whenever uh, there is a transfer of money or uh, even whenever there is a movement of uh, alcohol like that so because of this what happened so there will be prolonged election duties will be also there so it will be also risky for the police security forces and next one is the term of lok sabha and vidhan sabha would normally commence and expire on a particular date like they will be having the uh, having the time period of 5 years and it's when is the focus on the governance will increase instead of being constantly in election mode okay so these are the some important advantages or the arguments which are favoring for this one nation one election program and what about the arguments against the first one is it will be hampering federalism it undermines the fundamental principle of federalism which constitutes a basic component of our constitutional structure so it will be hampering federalism and next one is logistical challenges all states in the central government faces massive logistical challenges like coordinating the schedules resources etc yes if you if all the states and uh, lok sabha polls are at the same time means so logistic means the movement is very very challenge and next one is the regional variations synchronizing elections may not account for these regional variations adequately so here if you see some regions they are having good and well infrastructure but some areas they are remote areas so because of this regional disparities so we cannot go for proper successful elections okay in this remote village areas and next one is financial implications conducting elections is very expensive and even requires massive resources like manpower and even issue of dissolution sometimes here in the state legislative assemblies they will be facing like dissolution of government okay premature dissolution which happens whenever this vote of no confidence is passed then that government should resign right so because of this yes we can't go for the simultaneous elections and next one is holding simultaneous elections for the whole country has many practical difficulties even for this election commission of india okay so this is the thing which mainly said and whenever uh, there is uh, common elections for this lok sabha and state legislative assemblies so we have many regional parties in the state so they will be getting disadvantage okay clear so these are the very important points that you have to remember regarding the simultaneous elections and there is a very high scope of getting prelims and mains based question and whenever you are seeing this election topics in news so elections is one of the favorite area of upsc clear and now let us move back to our hindu page so only one article is important in the front page so in the city page you can leave this simply and even the states page also i found nothing much important so there is only one small article regarding index so actually whenever you are seeing any report or any index in news there is a high chance of getting question regarding that index and there will be very simple question like recently so and so index is seen in news which organization released that index so that will be uh, the basic question that will be asked by upsc not beyond this 
ओके सो मेनी टाइम्स इन टू थाउजेंड एटीन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू द क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन दिस इंडेक्स गिवेन डायरेक्टली इन यूर फिल्म्स ओके सो दिस इज दैट टॉपिक दैट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट इज इंडिया वन थर्टी फोर्थ इन ग्लोबल ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट इंडेक्स सो देर इज ऑल्सो द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नेम विच गेव दैट इंडेक्स दैट इज यू एन डी पी सो यू कैन गेट ए क्वेश्चन लाइक रिसेंटली ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट इंडेक्स इज इन यूज विच ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डेवलप दिस सो यू कैन गेट ऑप्शन लाइक वर्ल्ड बैंक आई एम एफ यू एन डी पी डब्ल्यू एच ओ सो दैट इज यू एन डी पी ओके सो डोंट कन्फ्यूज विथ यू एन डी पी एंड यू एन ई पी so now let us see the dimensions so this article is talking about human development index so this topic is talking about human development index and which is that organization releasing this undp it is at most important and you have to see like ranking of india and if you are preparing for any other public service examinations so from this ranking also you can get a question so what is the rank of india in this human development index like that and you have to see like from international relations we can compare india's ranking with other countries we can compare india's ranking with other countries especially we have to focus on our neighboring countries always indians they have a tendency like so they will be much interested regarding the things which is happening in our neighboring houses right so that is the mentality of indians even i am also from that category only i am not the exceptional here right so because of this we will be comparing india's rank with our neighboring countries like we have a small neighboring country that is bhutan and harsh country that is pakistan and also china dragon country like that we will be comparing india's ranking with other countries so it is a typical indian mentality okay and we have to see like which are the indicators on based on this this index is given so based on this indicators also you can expect a question from prelims and how this article that you can use from mains point of view is so whenever you are writing any answer or even in your essay you can quote this index so that it can add value to your answer okay clear so now let us see the details regarding this topic so if you see the context it says that India ranking is one thirty five in twenty twenty one, and in twenty twenty two it is one thirty four, and there are about one ninety three countries who are ranked in twenty twenty two, and one ninety one countries ranked in twenty twenty one. So have you see any improvement here? Please let me know your personal perspective. Okay, so here. 191 out of 191 india's ranking is 135 and out of 193 india's ranking is 134 so whether can i say there is improvement or not here see this denominator okay so india's southern neighbor that is small island nation okay small island nation here that is sri lanka it is like a tear drop right So Sri Lanka has been ranked seventy eight, and Dragon Country ranked seventy five. So they are having high human development category, but India, India is not that much. And India also ranks even below Bhutan. Bhutan stands at one twenty five, and even Bangladesh. So Bangladesh stands one twenty nine. Okay, so with when we are comparing with other countries, we are understanding that we are lagging behind, right? So this is the thing which is clear, right? So you have to see like why we are lagging behind our neighboring countries. So what are the reasons? And you have to see like what are the steps these countries are taking to improve this human development index. 
So why can't we think in this dimension? So if you know that we can implement that in our country, so that we can also can improve in this human development index in the next rankings. Yes or no? And if you are talking about some facts regarding this human development index, it is a tool. So this tool which measures countries overall achievements. So it will measure countries overall achievements in its social and economic dimensions. The rank indicates the state of nation's health. It will be indicating the nation's health and education and also average income. So who came up with this index? Pakistani economist that is Mahabub ul Haq, he created this human development index in 1990s itself. Okay, and this was further used by UNDP for creating a report on this nation's socio-economic conditions. So what is this UNDP? So UNDP, it is United Nations Global Development Network. Okay, it is United Nations Global Development Network. And this UNDP is based on merging United Nations Expanded Program of Technical Assistance and United Nations Special Fund. And UNDP, it was established in 1965 by United Nations General Assembly. And finally, when it came into operational in January 1966. So it provides expert advice, training, and also grant support to the developing countries with increasing emphasis on assistance to the least developed countries. And actually this UNDP executive board is made up of representatives. They are from around 36 countries across the world. Okay, and this UNDP is funded entirely by voluntary organization from the member countries. So from the member countries, they are getting the funding. And even UNDP is central to United Nations Sustainable Development Groups also. Okay, so this UNDP will be published in this Human Development Index. So these are the very important facts and from these statements, you can directly expect your prelim statements. Okay, clear? Yeah, and now let us move on to our Hindu newspaper. And you can skip entire states page. So there is nothing much important. And today is Friday, you can skip this Metropolis and also Spotlight. Okay, there is no new, no use of reading the spotlight and as well as your metroplex. Simply skip them. And now let us move on to our editorial page. So even in our editorial page also I found most of those articles are political. So there is no need of going through that. So I am saving your time, right? By letting you know like which article is important and which is not. Yes or no? So if I am helping you, please hit the like button. And please encourage me and even try to give the Google reviews for this Rathor's IS and about your personal experience with this news analysis. If you, are, if you have taken any course, have taken any course, so give the review of that course as well. So especially many students, they had uh, this main translating course, right? So what is your experience? So please tell me. Yes, now let us see this article. So here you can see Lakpati Didi scheme. So recently in our interim budget, so there is a mention of this Lakpati Didi scheme and from scheme's point of view, keep these words in your mind. So you can get two to three questions every year. Okay. You can get two to three questions every year from your scheme's point of view in your prelims. And even mains also you can get schemes. And if you have a good command on schemes, you can write way forward what are the measures already taken and even essay. So it will become much handy. So focus on the schemes and which ministry, what is the aims and objective of that scheme. At least three, these three to four uh, important things regarding each and every scheme that you have to know. Such that you will be having a good knowledge regarding the schemes and you can write a very good answer for sure. So now let us move on to our editorial page. Yes, there is one article, it is about AI advisory. So you have to know like AI advisory, so what are the important components of this AI advisory? And there's a high chance of getting questions regarding the science and technology in mains. 
because every day there is lots and lots of developments that we can see in this artificial intelligence machine learning right so because of this yes we need to control this so for that mighty so mighty is nothing but ministry of en electronics and information technology so what is this mighty ministry of electronics and information technology came up with advisory that is called as ai advisory and you have to know what are the provisions of that at least so this is the only article which is important from your examination point of view so this article is not at all important it is about alliance between bjp and jjp so you are not bothering about that and even this article is talking about bhutan okay so actually it is talking about economic hub of bhutan at this ghelepu so actually uh, it is also somewhat relevant why because so this ghelepu is a town which is bordering assam in india okay so because of this yes you can get a question like place and country so place and news and country belongs to so here you have to remember this ghelepu is but is in bhutan and this ghelepu town which is bordering assam in india okay clear so you have to see like what are the relations which are the areas of cooperation between india and bhutan so that's it okay and and next important article is here in this opinion page you can see has poverty really dropped to 5% in india or not so here you have to see like lots and lots of dimensions so i will let you know like which are those dimensions so this poverty so this topic is important from both your gs paper 2 and also gs paper 3 point of view so i will tell you the dimensions first you have to know what is this world bank definition about this poverty or what is this imf definition regarding this poverty so the first one and you have to see the two important terms or terminology which talks about poverty that is what is absolute poverty and what is relative poverty you have to know what is absolute poverty and what is relative poverty and you have to see what are the causes of this poverty and you can see like what are the measures taken so in this measures taken you can see like which are the schemes came up by the government okay and you have to see like what is the impact of this poverty so if you're talking about impact so there are many subjects we can include here what is the impact on economy what is the impact on family it will also leads to child labor and you have to see like impact on society impact on urbanization that will leads to emergence of slums and you have to see impact on health it is one important cause for malnutrition anemia and even mmr maternal mortality rate imr clear and you have to see so what will be the impact of this poverty on government so government need to come up with the development schemes and government need to provide food at a subsidized price okay so all these are very very important okay so from economy point of view you have to see what is this gini coefficient and you have to see which are the theories of this poverty so all these are the different dimensions that you have to think about from this poverty point of view and now let us see the article first that is about ai advisory so if you see why it is in news because on 1st march ministry of electronics and information technology that is mighty issued an advisory to artificial intelligence industry okay for the artificial intelligence industry here ministry gave an advisory 
So this advisory stated that all such products which are similar to large language models like Google Germany. So Google Germany was in news, right? And it must be made available with explicit permission of the government of India if they are under testing or unreliable. So if you're talking about exact what are those advisories, the first one here is permission is must for AI models even whenever they are in even the st stage of testing also there is a need of permission. So advisory says that the use of under testing or unreliable artificial intelligence models or algorithms and its availability to users or Indian internet they must be done so with explicit permissions. So everything should be done after taking permission of government of India okay and next one here is uh, AI platforms they cannot threaten poll process or they should not spread misinformation at all so advisory says that these platforms they have to ensure that AI models are not permitted to use or publish or host any unlawful content okay and this one is platforms they also have to ensure that computer resources they do not permit any bias or discrimination so it should not have any threat to our integrity of election process okay and this one is permanent unique identifier is very important because we have to identify who created that content okay it is mainly used to stop the spread of misinformation or deep fakes and this one is users dealing with unlawful information that they should be punished. So government has asked this AI platforms to communicate that if users they deal with this unlawful information and they can lead to suspension from the platform from the user's account or may also in uh, they also incur into punishments under applicable laws. And if there is any non-compliance, then that lead to penal consequences. That means imprisonment. Okay, under this IT acts or IT rules. So these are the some important advisories under this AI advisory. And now let us move back to the page of text and context. And here we are going to see these two articles. So first one is CAA and status of judicial proceedings. And next, we are going to see about Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC. These two articles are very important. Okay, so already we discussed about this CAA topic number of times, right? And again, we are going to see in brief. We are not going to dig deep into the topic. So if you see context, it says that the Ministry of Home Affairs noted that rules to implement CAA which fast track citizenship for non-Muslim immigrants from neighboring countries. So this citizenship act is saying about who are going to get citizenship. That is like six communities were excluding Muslims from three countries like Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan. So there are some delays that we are seeing in this implementation of the CAA. So because of this, this act is facing challenges in even Supreme Court. So even Tamil Nadu state government said that we are not going to implement this CAA. It is the entire purview of center. So parliament have the power to make the laws. It is not the, it is not the responsibility of state. So that is the thing which said by Tamil Nadu state government. So if you see some important details. So petitions that challenge this Citizenship Amendment Act constitutionality. And they also argued that Article 14 by making religion a qualifier of for citizenship and petitioners they seek a stay on recently notified rules that they are criticizing or bypassing of a tired scrutiny for citizenship applications and even government's decision to implement the rules before final court decision is given. And next topic it is about what are the causes of flare up in eastern Congo. So here there is also a chance of getting question like as I said earlier. So whenever there is any country is in news, you can uh, get a question like country name and reason will be why it is in news. So from that area also you can get question. So in this way, the question which asked in 2023, 2022 and 2021 and even 2018 also this type of question appeared in your prelims. 
so when you are seeing any country or any place in news so you have to write place name which country and why so these here are very important okay so here context says that renewed clashes which happening in this eastern democratic republic congo between congolese army and as well as rwandan backward m23 rebels so because of this issues between this uh, army of congo and rwandan backward rebels it is uh, one of the global threat or the global concern so if you see across the world russia ukraine crisis is happening israel palestine issue is going on and again now here congo and rwandan issue is going on so this conflict which is increasing humanitarian crisis in this region and even there is increasing of fatalities means death and even there is this uh, there is displacements of people that that means that my people are moving to other places and even food security risk so these are all the problems you are facing by the people who are present in this drc region now and now united nations and several western countries they denounce the attacks and they argue that this m23 rebels are offensive so they have to stop the things and if you see this map so this is democratic republic of congo so the country sharing boundary like congo here okay and here angola here zambia tanzania here we have rwanda okay you have to see these countries like sudan okay central african republic so they are sharing the boundary okay and now let us move on to our news page so in this news page i found nothing much important so i am letting you know only the articles that are relevant from our examination point of view so that you will be not wasting much time okay so that you can complete newspaper within 1 to 1 and a half hour and you can spend the rest of time at least in preparing csat because csat is becoming tough and tough day by day you have to focus on that so here you can see one article tamil nadu tops illegal trade in shark body parts about 65 percentage of illegal trade of the shark body parts is happening from tamil nadu so here you have to see like what is this so here you have to see about topic call as animal trafficking you have to see like what are the reasons and you have to see like what are the acts which are present like wildlife protection act we have traffic okay we have sites okay you have to see how this acts are implemented so why still animal trafficking or animal organs trafficking is happening or illegal trade of animals is happening and next one is india is likely to start free trade deal talks with eauu that is eurasian economic union okay eurasian economic union so till now we talked about efta that is european free trade association we had this as there are four countries which are part here that is slin right okay that is slin which uh, that is slin you have to know which are the countries of this slin and you have to know countries of this ea uh, sorry ea eu that is eurasian economic union so this is very important and please let me know which are the countries part of this eurasian european union okay so here there is also one more fact which is given here is so here foreign minister of belarus declared during the two visit to india so here there is also one more area where you can get question is india belarus relation so you have to see map of this in belarus and you have to see like which are the country sharing border with belarus as well so you have to know about eurasian economic union members okay so these are the very important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper and nothing more than this in our today's hindu so don't spend much time in reading this hindu because prelims is very much near and focus on csat 
and where can you get this notes is in our telegram channel so this is rathod's is classes telegram channel if you join this you can get the notes in the pdf format and this is our youtube channel rathod's is academy so we'll be daily posting the videos and i am thinking that from today onwards we are going to start the series where i will be discussing very important topics where you can get the questions from your current affairs point of view because current affairs is becoming difficult for you right so i will be having i will be taking the classes separately for schemes schemes 1 2 3 like that and i will be covering like 4 to 5 schemes important uh, in single video and i will be taking separate classes for species in use like uh, environment related thing and developments from science and technology and even indices and military exercises and places in news okay so that you will be having a great advantage of watching those videos and i will be ensuring that from current affairs i will be doing 100% of judgment okay so that's all and this is our rathod's is academy's website so if you want to take courses like if you are not confident in single subject you can take single subject courses or if you want to take entire foundation course you can take foundation course and this foundation we are providing both offline and online so offline admissions are going on and offline batch is going to be started from june okay so if you want to take offline admission you can call me on this number 8074765513 so if you want to take any admission or if you have any queries regarding the courses feel free to contact me on this number and even you can text me on whatsapp on this number as well so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this class so by this i'm concluding and don't forget to like and please do share this class and don't forget to subscribe to rathor science academy and if possible please give google review and rating thank you so much for watching